Hello writers. For the past few weeks, we have been speaking about what happens after you have typed the glorious words, the end. We have spoken about manuscript appraisals. We've spoken about editing and proofreading. And at last, we're speaking about publishing. Writers, my name is Mia. I'm from Writers Write. Um, for those of you who have found us for the first time, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Um, I've been a writing facilitator for Writers Write for about 10 years. I have started an online writing community where we kick procrastination butt on a monthly basis um, by writing one poem and one short story a month. We have lots of fun over there. Um, but on Writers Write for the last few weeks, I have been speaking about the end. So what happens to your manuscript after you've typed those glorious words and you're finally done? Bad news, you're very far from done. Good news, we've got lots of people who can help you. Okay, so one of the biggest things that, or the biggest decisions that you're going to have to make with your manuscript is whether you want to self-publish or traditionally publish. First off, like everything on the internet, there are very clear divides in what people like or don't like or suggest you should do. The first thing I want to tell you is you must do what is right for you. No one can decide that for you. Um, that said, we are going to speak to, about self-publishing today. Um, with me is Dave Henderson from the company called My Ebook. They offer the full service in self-publishing from manuscript right through to getting your book up on the virtual shelves, the real shelves. Um, so we're gonna chat about that today. What I'm hoping will come out of this and for the next few weeks as well, I'll be talking about traditional publishing as well. I'm hoping when you're done with all of this education, um, you will be able to make an informed decision about what is best for you and what is best for this specific book. Okay, so we're gonna talk about Dave. Um, he might be slightly biased to the self-publishing angle, but um, that's why we're giving you all the information so you can make your own um, decision. So Dave, do you want to tell us a little bit more about yourself and your company? I was hoping you'd give the intro. You're doing a, a very good job <laughs> and I thought you'd do a lot better than me. But uh, as you point out, I'm Dave. I love helping authors and I'm lucky enough to have a business that specializes in holding authors' hands through the whole publishing process. And basically all the viewers need to know is that i help a lot of authors so the last time i checked since around 2012 we've helped around 350 plus authors through the process and so we have a very good idea of the pain points the frustrations um you know the the fears that every new author has and and so my days are spent on the phone with authors kind of guiding them putting their mind at ease you know, advising them. And um, it's, it's, it's a process that I'm, I'm intimately sort of familiar with, uh, especially as you point out, I'm horribly biased. So uh, apologies <laughs> at, the, at, the, at the start. Because of how I got into the business, I have a distinct bias against uh, the traditional sort of um, fallacies, you know, the myths, the, the reasons people think they're going into the traditional process. Um, and there's a bit of a backstory, obviously, where I got into the self-publishing side because of uh, my father, who had been somewhat taken advantage of um, in the publishing game. And because of that, I, I do have a definite uh, slant to self-publishing. So you have been forewarned. Okay, cool. Just um, on that note, um, I've also made use of Dave's services um, for an ebook about the craft of short story writing. And I can tell you it's awesome. He's available. He, Dave answers phones. <laughs> he answers frantic, frantic voice notes about very panicked authors. So um, it really is a cool part of the process. Um, but yeah, we're going to get started. I think first of all, we just maybe need to take a look at some definitions. So could we maybe just could you maybe give us some clear clarity if we go traditional publishing versus self-publishing versus vanity publishing? What if, what are we dealing with? So so exactly as you pointed, there's a couple options every author faces at the start. And some of them, you know, some authors don't realize that you have these choices at the start. And there's reasons to take different options. You know, it could be a personality uh, trait that you have. Mm -hmm. It could be the income that you have available. It could be the deadlines that you have um, to meet. So the two main splits every author who's just finished writing needs to decide is, well, am I going traditional or am I going self-publishing? Uh, there is a horrible bastard middle child of, of the both uh, of the two of them that we'll speak about, but essentially it's traditional or it's self-publishing. 
Um, so a lot of authors don't realize, you know, a lot of authors, for example, think that there is only one way that they, they have to be accepted by someone else, by a publisher, for example, to uh, achieve any kind of success. Um, but more and more I'm finding authors aware that there is this thing self publishing and that it's losing the stench it used to have, you know, it's losing the stench and years back when self publishing first started, um, there were so many, teething pains people had to go through. And I think more and more authors are realizing that it's, it's not sort of a horrible worst case option, but it's actually viable for very specific, uh, for very good reasons, you know, for authors who have, you know, deadlines and personality traits uh, that lend themselves to being in control, for example. Cool, okay. Can you tell us a bit in your mind, what are the pros and cons of, for example, traditional publishing versus the pros and cons of self-publishing from your point of view? Okay. So, so most of my day is spent with the average author, you know, so they're sort of Joe or Jane average uh, who calls me and, and essentially says, I've got a, I've got a manuscript. I finished. I don't know what to do. Um, and what that, what that means for the average author is you've written your story. Now, some authors uh, might have written their life story, a memoir. Other authors might have gone for something, you know, more fiction based. But typically it's a first time author. Typically they've knocked out their, uh, their documents in Microsoft Word, for example. And they're asking, okay, now what next? Now, traditional publish the traditional publishing model is what most people think about from years and years ago. That's where you approach a, a big mm -hmm. publishing house like a Penguin, a Hachette, a Random House, and um, you go, hey, guys, I I've got this book. Um, I think it's really good. Would you guys please publish me? And they say yes or they say no. And if they say yes, the, uh, the promises or the, um, the understanding is that they will guide you through the process of, for example, the edit, the cover design, and things like that, which we'll you know, go through a little bit later on. And they will take care of all the scary bits for you. Um, so essentially they'll take what is your writing, they'll polish it, they'll package it, and they'll get you into those hard to reach, uh, bookshops, for example, that's the, mm -hmm. um, that's the understanding and what attracts authors to the traditional, um, method is the not having to pay much, if anything at all. So the thinking is great. I can just write because most authors, and I'm sure you agree would go, I hate marketing. I hate selling. <laughs> and so the, the illusion is mm -hmm. that, well, I can just write this big and, and, and famous publisher would take my book, uh, would get it into the best shape possible, uh, will make me famous and I'll get paid. Now, you know, some authors might be looking for a, a big advance, uh, for example. So they're looking for the immediate income followed by then royalties from book sales at a later stage. Um, but the traditional model is changing, meaning that more and more, especially now that they have competition, traditional publishers actually have to apply such stringent checks to make sure that the authors they're going to partner with are viable investments for them. And so that's why I call a lot of these things myths because you, you think you won't have to touch marketing. If you go traditional, you think, for example, the income is going to be much better. And, and so that's the attraction to it. The attraction is, I can just write, um, I will just get paid and I'm not going to have to sort of get my hands into any of those, uh, you know, the scary uh, marketing and sales kind of things. Um, the self publishing side is, let me think about this. So, so it attracts people with a much more um, people with a need for control. So people who enjoy control because there's obviously several steps that every author goes through or needs to go mm -hmm. through. And, a lot of authors might like the control to say, Hey, I don't want that. I want this. I want this color. I want this shape. I want that text. Now the traditional publisher obviously won't give you that amount of freedom because to be honest, they do know best when it comes to what sells well, where a self publishing author has, um, because you're paying the costs, you have the freedom of choice. Okay. It doesn't always make it a good thing because a lot of authors make, you know, uh, bad design choices, but essentially it's perfect for people who need a very strong degree of control. It's ideal self-publishing for people who have tight deadlines. 
because obviously, unfortunately, with the traditional model, um, even if I, if I um, am completely unbiased, I think everyone would agree that the timelines are quite long. You know, the submission, the waiting, and then even if you get accepted, waiting for those kind of wheels to turn can take a bit of time. And so for anyone who goes, listen, I need to get my book out, you know, in three months time, six months time for Christmas, for this event, whatever the case is, you might not want to wait for someone to tell you, okay, now we're ready. Um, and, and bear in mind what you're waiting for a lot of the time is actually just an answer, not necessarily waiting for the book mm -hmm. to pop out the other side, but you're waiting for someone to go, we got you, we'll work with you or more than likely, sorry, your kind of book is not what we're looking for. So self-publishing gives uh, the author control. It gives the author the freedom of timelines because generally it'll be done much quicker. And so for authors who, uh, who for example, might be running their own business, you know, for authors who want to uh, maximize their income, self-publishing is, is a, great, uh, a great place to start. Can I, yeah, I just want to, jump in there with your with the costs um, I think that's also sometimes something that we that we um, fool ourselves with with traditional publishing and assuming that there are no costs um, I think in the in the good old days where you know you could give a very rough manuscript to an editor and there weren't as many editors there weren't or any writers around and stuff I mean if you think of the days of um, the Hemingways or um, who wrote To Kill a Mockingbird? Harper Lee. Okay, I mean, Harper Lee, she got the manuscript back and the editor told her, rewrite it like this. Today, you get a yes or a no, and it's most often just a yeah. pre-printed pre form letter. So we don't get that okay, kind of yeah. care and attention. And if you look at it, I mean, I heard about editors the other day, I think they're sitting on, they do about 30 books a month in a big publishing house. It's impossible to care for authors as much. So with traditional publishing, even if you do choose to go that route, um, there are still costs involved. You must still give them the best manuscript possible. So there's most likely been an appraisal. There's most likely been an edit. There's most uh, hopefully definitely been a proofread. So um, yeah, it's just to keep in mind that, that it isn't entirely cost free, which is sometimes the impression that we're given. Yeah, I think, I think that's a side authors probably don't see is, is um, the authors who approach a publisher or approach a self-publisher like myself um, is uh, that the influx of submissions people get, you know, the influx of authors knocking on your door going, help me, please. Um, you know, some authors are, are at the start of the homework process where they just have, they have a whole bunch of questions. Um, and some authors are going, okay, I'm ready. I need, you know, help, for example, right now. And we, we deal with up to between five and 10 queries per day. Sure. So five to 10 queries per day. Most of those queries are people saying, I just want to take up 30 to 60 minutes of your time and ask a lot of questions, which I love, but it does mean that uh, your time is limited. Mm -hmm. And I know for traditional publishers, they have the same problem. Uh, you have so many people knocking on your door going, I've got this, I've got this, you know, what do you think? And to answer them and give them the advice that every author actually needs in terms of not just hopefully a yes or no, but something a little bit more insightful to actually help them. Um, it's time consuming. And I think, I think authors very easily, uh, and it's understandable as well, they feel like you know, that they're the center of their publisher's universe. They've got the answer and the publisher or, or the self-publisher has to help them because why wouldn't they? Mm -hmm. And the frustration, well, why haven't you answered me today? Uh, you know, so, so authors need to understand that there's actually a lot more um, interest in publishing than you think. And mm -hmm. often you're not the only person asking. Um, there's a lot of other authors looking for that same kind of deal that you might be looking for. And uh, before I forget, we actually didn't speak about the, the horrible bastard child of uh, traditional and, and self-publishing. And that actually, if I can go into a little bit of a story, is how I got into this game. Mm -hmm. uh, my background is not uh, publishing whatsoever. My background eight or so years ago was engineering. And uh, I happened to have a, a father who wrote books and essentially um, what my father chose to do. So we spoke about traditional, we spoke about self-publishing. We spoke about the, the sort of um, traditional side where someone will take you, guide you and uh, do a very good job potentially of getting your book published. Um, and, and you would then earn income from whatever books were sold in, in bookstores mm -hmm. typically. Uh, we spoke about self-publishing where, you know, you have more control. Uh, things like copyright belong to you, which we'll speak about a little bit later on. And 
you earn everything. So the nice thing, uh, one of the great uh, pros of self-publishing, obviously, is that any money that you earn comes straight to you. Mm -hmm. Where traditional publishing, the money is shared with a whole bunch of people, uh, meaning at the end, I, and I think you'll know a lot more than me here, but the end royalties that North ends up with is, is minimal. You know, mm -hmm. it's absolutely minimal from the list price of a book. So take those two, um, take the worst parts of both. You know, so I think the worst parts of traditional might be, for example, that you have to share commission. You have to share, if you get accepted, if you do get mm -hmm. accepted, you now have to share your pie with a, a few other people in that, in that um, process. Uh, with the cons of the, the self-publishing side, which is obviously you're responsible for upfront costs. You know, so you have to uh, pay for upfront costs. Um, now combine those two. And that's what we call vanity press. Mm -hmm. And a vanity press is essentially where the author loses twice because you know, that's, that's what my dad wanted. So he decided, well, I'm going to uh, pay a bunch of money to someone and then I'm going to give away a portion of my sales. And that was my introduction to the publishing world of, of having a father who had uh, you know, a lot of printed material because you must print thousands of books because that's the cheapest mm -hmm. quantity. You, know? you must print 3000 yeah. books. Um, and these boxes look beautiful stacked up in your study. And now you can only give them to, to give them away for Christmas for the first year. <laughs> oh my goodness. The, the, the amount of times we saw these books floating around oh, at events and the house was crazy. And uh, so essentially he lost twice. He lost because he had to pay, um, you know, large sums of money up front. And he also gave away large portions of his royalty. And so you normally want to pick either or never mm -hmm. a case where you're paying someone up front as well as needing to give away a portion of the pie because then it defeats the purpose. Mm -hmm. You're avoiding uh, the one or the other and going for uh, just a horrible option in general. Amen. I'm sorry that happened. It's yeah, but hopefully this will help to avoid that and make educated decisions. So agreed. Okay. okay, cool. If you okay, can we talk a little bit? What is the p potential income? Self-publishing versus traditional publishing. What do your splits look like? What can you expect? That's interesting. So, so it ties into one of the most common questions I get from an author, which is very obviously, <laughs> "Hello, um, how much money will I make?" Yeah. Um, and it, mm -hmm. it's it's very weird to ask that because if you think about it. Um, and I'm going to do this a lot during this chat, where I I say where your business cap, you know, where your okay take off the author cap, which is, you know, the passion for the writing and, you know, you're inside this book, which you've been invested in for the last couple of years, but on the business cap and say, well, you've got one product. Okay. Now this, this applies to both traditional and self-publishing, but especially the self-publishing side. And then author who says, well, I want to self-publish, but before I do, how much can I expect to make? Okay. Well, flip mm -hmm. it around and say, what marketing do you have planned? What audience do you have? What effort are you going to put into this marketing process? Are you typically just going to write, step back and wait. Um, what genre have you chosen to write in? Because let's face it, some genres are busier than others. So an author mm -hmm. comes to you with a, a book on their life story. You can tell pretty quickly that the market for that's going to be quite small. So, so it depends. Some of, the, some of the factors determining the amount of money you can make are decided when you start writing already. Because again, if you're going fiction, which has a, a massive fan base, not necessarily in South Africa, but um, across the rest of the world. So if you're writing fiction versus writing your memoir and your, your life story, already you can see that one has the potential to earn a lot more than the other. Um, and, and, and the second mm -hmm. way I, I like to, um, to test my authors is go, well, you tell me what you have planned. You tell me what, what, uh, what marketing effort you have, you know, what platforms you might have. And these are cool, you know, these are cool things we can chat about a bit later on in the process, but essentially um, most authors look at me quite blankly and go, I, I'm, I'm on Facebook and I'm on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And for an author who's unprepared for the marketing side, you've almost sealed your fate. You've almost sealed your fate, you know, because one book for, uh, from a first time author, typically in South Africa, you know, that's nonfiction, typically again, either a nonfiction or, or religious content, um, you are, are setting yourself up to fail if you don't wear the business cap and ask yourself questions about how you can get readers excited about the book once it goes live. Um, that said, it does tie into what your goal for the book actually was. Mm -hmm. Because I'm sure you can agree that some authors write you know, for income, for money, um, for, for status, 
some authors might write because they just have a painful, uh, they have a painful life journey that they want to share with people. In which case, the author who, who's written a book, which was to share something painful, uh, where hopefully other people can you know, learn from that, money matters less. So one of the first questions is, you know, I, I normally walk the author through is actually, why did you write this book? Because, because the author who's written the book for more of a cathartic reason, mm -hmm. often uh, they care less about the income. Where an author who says to me, I want this to be a business. I want to make the most amount of money possible. I want to quit my day job. All of a sudden now, the, the advice I give is going to be a lot more focused on writing as a business and not necessarily purely for the passion. Okay. Yeah, I think that is how I start every course as I tell my writers, don't quit your day job. It takes oh, yeah. a bit longer than that. So, okay. I, I no, totally great agree. stuff. Okay. So... Let's say you do get this call from this author and they are still very much conflicted about self-publishing and traditional publishing. What advice do you give them? What, where do you tell them to go? What should they go look at? What, what kind of information do you give them or recommend to someone who's still conflicted? Yeah. So why not both? There's, there's this illusion that you have to pick one or the other. You know, that if you pick one, you can't take the other because, you know, a, a publisher won't want to deal with you if you've self-published a book. And so for an author who says, well, you know, let's take, a, let's take one of the downfalls, not downfalls, one of the, um, the negatives of self-publishing is it's a little harder to earn a, an award, an accolade. Because mm -hmm. most accolades, for example, I saw we had the, I saw we had the book awards recently. Um, I saw the, the link shared out. Mm -hmm. And the awards were only considered for authors inside bookstores, physical bookstores. And so as a self-published author, as you walk into uh, this publishing model, know that most of the uh, well-known publishing awards are given to people who've been traditionally published. So, so the, the, um, if you're looking for that kind of, you know, for that kind of accolade, uh, just know that it's a lot easier if you do go uh, the traditional method um, and your book is available in the bookstores. But the author needs to know that you can do both. The illusion of if you self-publish, no publisher will touch you is wrong. A lot of publishers, going back to what you and I said earlier, where the publishers have so many authors to now choose from that they would more than likely rather choose an author who's proven they've got a bit of a, mm -hmm. a, bit of a plan, a bit of a following. And so how else do you get that following than actually putting material out there. So you no longer have to choose either traditional or self-publishing when you can in fact start self-publishing because I think nothing kills an author more than going, well, I've written this really cool book, but I've waited the last year and you know, I've got distracted and now I'm gonna go back to my full-time job and focus on that. And so one of the scariest things about traditional publishing for me is the, the lack of that cycle where you hear from readers who've loved your book. You get excited and you carry on writing. Now, if your book has been languishing for the past year or year and a half while you've been waiting, um, your motivation has died. With the beauty of self-publishing, you're able to get to the market quicker to get that, that appreciation cycle moving. And so, so again, you can do both. You can start uh, self-publishing and then a publisher can take those rights over from you and, uh, and, and, and traditionally publish you with that book or with the next book even. So, so I would always say, uh, even for those people who love the self-publishing option, um, there is an option called hybrid publishing where publishers do certain things well and they don't do other things well. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to brick and mortar you know, uh, stores and paperback books, you cannot beat a publisher in terms of their reach. They can get books into places, into physical locations that it will be really difficult for most authors. Um, and in that respect, give them their dues. Let them handle the physical distribution. But as an author, you can go back to the publisher and say, I want to split the rights. I want you to handle the physical side. I'm going to do the digital and the ebook side. And that's something that you can do better than most publishers. So because, uh, and we'll speak about the platforms a little later on, um, I'm, I'm a fan of not being stuck in any of the options, but getting the best of both. Okay. Um, tell me a little bit. Okay. So 
if I come to you and I explain my situation to you, um, what's, what's the criteria you use when you tell someone, I think you should self-publish or I think you should continue with the traditional publishing route? What kind of, what is the criteria that you look at for when should you self-publish and when should you traditionally publish? I, I think where I refer most authors to traditionally publish is, is in a conversation where an author hears about a cost, any cost, however small, mm -hmm and is completely surprised or taken aback. So as soon as any author looks at me and says, what I have to pay you know, for self-publishing? And, and bear in mind, it doesn't matter what you're paying. It could be, uh, it could be 100 grand, it could be 1,000, it could be 10,000. As soon as an author goes, um, oh, wow, I have to pay. Um, firstly, it means I haven't done the homework, which is a red flag, but secondly, the only way an author can, can potentially, and again, I, I, I stress it is a bit of a myth, the only way an author can hope to avoid potential costs is going for the traditional option. Again, know what you're sacrificing. You're sacrificing time because you're more than likely going to be waiting a year, if, you know, to, to hear back from the publisher. But yeah, where an author is scared of costs, I typically go listen, phone publishers, submit to publishers, see what they say, best of luck. Um, and often I hear from those authors again in a year or two's time going, but no one wanted to help me. And then I help them through the self-publishing process. All right. Um, if, uh, if you were a first time author, what route would you follow? I am a, a DIY guy by nature. Mm -hmm. So, so I would absolutely start, um, I would start with the self-publishing model. Um, self-publishing gives you absolute control and, and it gives you the freedom of branding. Nobody can dictate things to you about what you need to say, what you need to do, what your colors and your branding need to be. Um, so I would dip my toes first with self-publishing, get started that way. And once I had a proven following, if I thought I'm going to take this writing thing seriously, I would knock on a couple doors. I would, I would take it from there, but I would always first do it myself because there's no way... Uh, an author can appreciate the process, uh, in my mind, if they haven't gone through it themselves already. Okay, all right. No, if not everyone's so DIY-ish. <laughs> what, uh, what option would you take out of interest if you had to choose, if you had to choose? That's what I, okay, so what I tell my students, and if I have to do it, okay, um, if you have an existing following, okay, so for example, you have built up, and this is easier for nonfiction. Okay, so for example, yeah. if I were a landscaper and I've been landscaping around for 20 years and I finally want to put all my knowledge in a book and I already have a concrete following, I have my Facebook friends who love my posts, thousands of them. So if you have that following in place, I think self-publishing is very much a natural progression. It does not have the prestige of traditional publishing. You know, there's still that beautiful, oh, someone else is willing to invest in my book. I think that is something that we're not quite yet um, with and you can't quite replace yet. So um, if you have a following, and especially in a nonfiction slant, I'm very, very positive about going for self-publishing. I think it's a very good thing to do. Um, I'm still a little bit in love with the romance of traditional publishing. So for my fiction, I'm yeah. still clinging, clinging to this, this love and this idea. But um, you also have to be realistic about it. And at some point, as you said, do I want to get going with this thing? Um, if you have these manuscripts and they're ready to go, really think about what you can do and what you want to do. Um, in terms of marketing, um, I, it, it overwhelms me completely. I'm just a little bit like, okay, whoa, it's a lot for me to do. But as you say, there's someone in, in the part of the process who can help you with that again. So, you know, maybe in hindsight, to go back and to say, I, I need help with this, I need help with that. Because it's, it's always interesting what you think you need help with and what, what you end up really needing help with. Yeah. So I think it's a huge part of that learning process. But um, yeah, so I think it really, it depends from book to book. If you asked me five years ago, I would have said only traditional publishing because I, at that stage, um, didn't have the confidence to say, I like my story. I think my story is awesome. I want to go for that it. That is so, so, so true. I, now that you say that, it, it reminds me that most of my conversations with first-time authors are spent reassuring them that what they've got is important. Mm -hmm. Because like you say, most people are looking for that validation going, is my message good enough? Mm -hmm. You know, is what I have good enough? And so much of, of what I do is actually purely reassuring the author that, that their voice is important, uh, important enough to publish. Um, and, and, you know, I think, I think that that's also the role of a good publisher. 
mm. um, to help the author find that voice as well. So that concludes our first video in the self-publication part of the series. I hope you learned a lot. Um, I have included contact details um, in the titles of these posts. If you have any questions for myself or for Dave, do not hesitate to ask. Thank you.